In 2015, a group of historical research volunteers were making their way along the shores of Strangford Lock, near the 19th century Mount Stuart House on the Ards Peninsula. They were examining old slipways and jetties when they came across something rather unusual, a memorial to eight people. Four of these people were the staff of Teresa, sixth Marchioness of Londonderry from Mount Stuart House. Then there were two boatmen, and finally, two staff members from Florence Court who were staying at the house, accompanying Lord Enniskillen and his daughter, Lady Kathleen Cole. From this memorial discovery sprang a tragic story which had been buried for over 120 years. On the 11th of April 1895, the Thursday before Easter weekend, Lady Londonderry and her family travelled to Belfast. Before leaving, she had granted some of her staff use of her yacht, the Mount Stuart, to enjoy a picnic on an island in Strangford Lock. That morning, the boatmen, William and Robert Hagen, a father and son, prepared to launch the yacht for the six staff members, Joseph W. Grange, the house steward, Eliza Taunt, the head cook, Elizabeth Dougal, a housekeeper, William Rowe, Lord Londonderry's valet, William Start, Lord Enniskillen's valet, and finally, Jane Cheshire, maid to Lady Kathleen Cole, who was only 19 years old. The party set off from Mount Stuart Jetty in fair weather with a moderate northwesterly breeze. They sailed in the direction of Bird Island before disembarking for their picnic. When they inevitably decided to return to shore, the party would have been sailing windwards and would need to perform several turns on their journey. The vessel was last sighted in mid-afternoon from the western shore before disappearing. The remaining staff and gentry at the house were concerned when the picnic party did not return that evening. However, access to the jetty was not possible until later in the day due to a low tide. The hope was that the group had become stranded and would return on the next high tide, which was early on Friday morning. They failed to return on Friday and Saturday after that. And by the time dawn broke on Easter Sunday, it was certain that the whole party was lost. Searchers over the weekend had recovered several items including an oar, picnic basket, and a hat belonging to Jane Cheshire. Mr Newton Apperley, the Londonderry's private secretary, arrived at the estate to manage the loss of the building's core staff. The tragic but mysterious disappearance hit headlines across the UK and Ireland. Lord Londonderry even received a telegram from Queen Victoria, expressing her condolences for the tragic loss of life. A memorial service was held in the chapel at Mount Stuart on Sunday the 21st of April, conducted by the Reverend Oliver Goldsmith, incumbent of Grey Abbey Church of Ireland, with responsibility for the household chapel. No bodies were recovered until the summer months between May and August. House steward Joseph W. Grange's body was found by the steamship Walrus on its way to Kirkubbin near Grantia Point on the 26th of May 1895. His keys, a gold hunting watch and a champagne knife identified him. He is now buried in Hillingdon an Uxbridge Cemetery near his birthplace. William Hagen's body was found on the 3rd of June at Ringdufferin on the west side of Strangford Lock. He is now buried at Trinity Parish Church in Kirkubbin. His son's body was never recovered, although his cap was found on the shore near Kirkubbin almost three weeks after the accident. Jane Cheshire's body was the next to be found at Ringborough Point, Lower Priestown, near Portaferry on the 8th of June. She was identified by her initials sewn into her clothing. Jane's grave is located at Ballyphillip Parish Church Graveyard, and the Londonderry family paid the funeral expenses at the time. Lady Kathleen Cole is recorded as having been very upset at the news of the loss of her personal maid. She was 22 years old, and although from very different backgrounds, it's very possible that she and Jane were good friends. William Start's body was the last to be recovered on the 24th of August at the barmouth of Strangford Lock, 
by the crew of Lord Bangor's yacht. The death certificate states that he was 26 years old, but there is no other lead as to his family or where he originally came from. It has recently been discovered that he is buried in an unmarked grave alongside his Florence court colleague, Jane Cheshire. The remains of Eliza Taunt, Elizabeth Dougal, William Rowe, and Robert Hagen remain lost to this day. That a tragedy of this scale was almost entirely lost to history, if not for the monumental effort of a team of volunteers, illustrates just how differently loss was handled over a century ago. It was widely reported at the time, a memorial service was held, the dead respectfully laid to rest, and never another word spoken. It was clearly a traumatic event for those affected by it, and it is not surprising that they wished to forget about it quickly. It is only with hindsight that the value of preserving this harrowing tale can be appreciated. It is a window into the lives of a group of people who are largely forgotten in stories of old, the servants of landed gentry. In recent years, the team of research volunteers have managed to relocate the salvaged ore in the back of an old barn on the estate. Making use of drones, sonar and 3D imaging, the team have managed to narrow down the search area for where the wreck of the Mount Stuart may lie on the bed of the loch. As of the making of this video, the final resting place has not been located, but the search continues. Perhaps the mystery of what really happened to the Mount Stuart and those sailing on it will soon be uncovered. For me, this moving and tragic tale highlights the importance of continued research and exploration into our past. Shedding a light on unknown stories and salvaging them from the clutches of obscurity and the erosion of time. The lessons we can learn from these events are indescribable and priceless. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.